I'm saying for this, there's no hurry to leave here at the moment. We've got plenty, we've got plenty of time. We're still waiting on the lobsters. Nice. Well, lobsters are going to come from Papua New Guinea is wild and untouched, and parts of it have still never seen a lure. And that's one of the things I love about the adventure of fishing with sport fishing PNG. Jason's operation is famous for its black bass, but it also offers some unbelievable access to some of the most remote coral reefs on Earth. And you know what? They're full of life. From the great Maori wrasses that everyone seems to go so mad over, to GTs that are just out of this world. There's dog tooth in there. There are so many species. And you know the beauty? You still don't know a lot about it. And this trip to Long Reef was accessing, for the first time ever, many of those untouched areas. But before we could even start fishing, we had a really important job to do. And that was help the locals. And this is something I really love about sport fishing PNG and about sport fishing in general in fishing remote areas is you bring those basic supplies to really remote communities that they never get access to. In this case, we've got school books, we've got medical supplies, all these really important things that you just never get in such remote areas like... And better still, you get a welcoming committee like no other. And just handing over those books that are simple things that are going to help educate these guys and help them to look after their local environment and care for it as the, as the outside world encroaches, that is a priority. With more gear than a tackle shot, there's one thing to do, and that's actually go fishing. Mind you, these guys seem to spend more time rigging than fishing. We were fishing the really remote areas of Long Reef. Now that's out from Milne Bay, out in the, what would that be, the eastern province. Incredibly remote and literally completely unfished. And you mothership off the K2O and then you run out in the small boats and test the grounds. And to give you an idea just how remote this area is, there are no nautical charts for it. They've all got big unnavigated areas, you know, uncharted. So part of this whole trip was just to discover what fishing potential there was. So in many cases, we actually had no idea what we were looking for or where we were going. And that's what I love about fishing remote areas. Colour under it. Oh, ho, ho. I think you got rejected like me at the pub. Right on that corner again, eh? Oh. Looking at you. Yeah, fish there. Got another cast in there just before we roll over it.
The whole trick with this style of fishing when you pop a fishing or stick baiting is to cover the ground. And one of the big things is to mix it up. So Andy's using a popper, I think it is, and I've got a stick bait. And as you can see, he's just hooked up to a solid mackerel. So after a close call with the mackerel, you can see me dance. You know what? This is what I came here for, to jump in and see all these coral reefs that literally never, ever been dived before. Such an amazing place. And the trout, those huge coral trout. How good is that? The amount of life indescribable, right? not just the trout, the bait fish, the pretty little Nemo's and all those sort of things as well. But you know what? I'm not here just to look at them. I've got to catch them. So it's back in the boat and back to casting. And as you can see, I'm working that lure pretty hard. The key to this style of fishing is to fish heavy tackle and really use the gear and load up on them. And you've seen how much, you know, the coral reef underneath, what it's like. And these fish are diving back in there, especially these big trout, to get back into these spots. So you've got to get them out and you've got to crank it up and do it hard. In this case, I was using the old Saragossa, what was new at the time when I was testing it. And for a cheaper version of Stella, man, it had some full on pulling power. The great thing about fishing these really remote waters is you just don't know what you're going to catch. One minute it's bluefin to valley, the next could be a GT, could be a dog tooth, could be mackerel, Maori wrasse, you name it, we catch it. But for me, one of the big things is to get the photos as well. So I normally fish less, but the great thing about this trip is that I get to fish as well as take photos. And even, just a couple of times, Pose for the shot as well. If you're really keen on getting good photos, one of the tricks is you want to roll the fish over and get it right. And in this case, what I'm doing is look at Andy going, right, there's no flash set. Now you've got bright light, so it's really hard. Actually, it's just cleaning the lens. Yep, definitely cleaning the lens. I know boats. I'll tell you what though, on that side, what's really important as well is that you have to be switched on and make sure, because I'm using a polarizer, that it's always clean. Now, back to it. So what you want to do is roll that fish over to get the best photo. And if you're using, if you want to leave the lure in like I love leaving the lure because it makes a brighter, sort of more exciting photo, make sure they're barbless because it can be really dangerous. And smile, smile, but roll that fish over and hold him out to the photo. Don't hold him too far out. Just get the right angle and shoot lots and lots of picks. And it seemed the old Halco rooster popper was doing the job. No fancy lures here. $20 lure, outfishing everyone.
but a top water bites. Working the popper, the good old rooster popper, working across the top, boom, you're on. It's just something about it that is just so awesome, especially when you catch it in front of all your mates. And this time round, it's a solid, solid trout. But you know what? This is the great thing. You can't keep catching them. You've got to hand the rod over to get the photos. So old Molly gets to you hand the rod, and I go off and get the camera while the others keep fishing. Toughest job in the world. One thing we found fishing Long Reef in these remote waters of Papua New Guinea is massive trout. There's no commercial fishing, there's no sport fishing for them, there's no, you know, catch and gr kill and grill guys, there's just none. So you get these huge trout, and most of them are on poppers like the old, I'm using an old Halco, well, let's say it's rusty hooks. I know Tim and Ben hate me doing it, but they absolutely love it, and I kept using the same lure for half the trip. And when you get fish of this quality, this makes it all worthwhile. And look at the size of it. What a monster. It's simply too big to handle. The important thing is it's a balance. You want to get the photo right and you want to get that fish back in the water quickly. And with big trout like this, yes, you can eat them in remote waters like this, but you know what? You want to look after them too. So you've got to support them, get that right angle, and then let them go. And let them grow. Mind you, I don't think they can grow much bigger than this. I love watching those big trout swim away. But it's even better is getting back in the water and seeing them all. Look at it. As soon as you get in, there was this huge trout and red bass and mary wrasse, you name it. I cannot describe how much life there is at Long Reef. It wasn't just the trout, but also heaps of red bass. And I mean heaps of red bass. It seemed at times every cast you'd catch red bass. Now you can't eat them, but man, they're fun to catch. In fact, they were so thick at times there that I even managed to get two on one lure. Now that just shows how good the fishing is in this really remote, untouched area. Just wish they had four strokes in those days because the serenity would be so much better without that noise. Oh, God. In fact, it was so good, the fishing, that you can get two fish on one lure. But of course, hooking it up and catching two fish? Nah, that's not the important part. Instead, it's all about handing over the rod so you can get the photos. Put the gaff away. There you go. You've got the rod. I need to get photos of this. And there's only one way to get good photos of that. And that is underwater. One other point worth mentioning is there's not a lot of sharks. You'd think in such a remote area, putting your hand over the side and filming, sharks would be a real issue. But in PNG, I barely saw a shark. And they're not overfished because no one fishes for them. There's just not a lot of sharks there, so you don't lose a lot of fish. During the final days of the trip, I got to fish with my old mate Jack. Now, Jack's probably not the tallest bloke, or the hardest working bloke you'd ever see. So when he hooks up, boy, do we all hear about it. Not 
that they're heavy drag and it still just peels line like nothing. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Does. Going easy on him. Put the pressure on. Let's go it up. Let's go 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 up. let us go up One of the great things about sport fishing PNG and fishing such remote waters is they really look after it. So all the hooks are barbless, which is obviously a massive important thing, not just for the fish, but for us as anglers, and especially when I'm in the water diving with them as well. Alright, so lead right over if you can, and I can then, yeah, if you guys go together, bring it down this way, come down here, that's perfect, come down a bit if you want, I can, so you can lead right over. The great thing about Jack is because he's so small that he makes every fish look big, so he's the perfect candidate for photos. Alright, now I'm just going still. Fishing Long Reef was one of those adventures that I'll remember for a long, long time. Jumping in in crystal clear water with such amazing sport fish. This is what I love about fishing. It takes you to these amazing remote places that you'd never see anywhere else. And you know what? This is just the beginning, because up next is the Dogtooth Adventure.